As technology and human innovation evolve, scientists and archaeologists discover more and more about the world around us. So today, here at Unexplained Mysteries, we'll be taking a look at interesting discoveries from around the world. A dormant underwater volcano in Antarctica awakened and triggered thousands of earthquakes. The frozen continent is somewhat deceiving. While this terrain is a large mass of snow, ice and cold, Antarctica is actually a desert, the largest in the world in fact. Despite the lack of sand, heat and cacti, Antarctica experiences hardly any rain, meaning that we classify the icy land as a desert. Much like this desert surprise, it might also shock you to know that there are a number of volcanoes in this mysterious environment. Of course, volcanoes are active, dormant or extinct, and these dormant volcanoes are bound to erupt again eventually. A volcano classified as dormant, sat just underwater near Antarctica, has certainly made a statement as it re-entered the scene, erupting and prompting a large string of earthquakes in 2020. From the August to the November of 2020, Antarctica saw a staggering 85,000 earthquakes. This is the strongest earthquake activity that has ever been seen in the Antarctic region. It is thought that they were the result of a small bit of a hot magma moving into the crust, according to some research delving into the bizarre event. Co-author of the study, Dr. Simone Seska, a seismologist at the GFZ German Research Center for Geosciences in Potsdam, explained that we have observed intrusions like this elsewhere, though never in the Antarctic before. She stated, normally these processes occur over geologic timescales. For context, the alternative to them occurring over geologic timescales would be to happen over the course of a human's lifespan, which is, of course, what has happened in the Antarctic, since the tens of thousands of earthquakes occurred over just a few months. Seska continued, adding that we are lucky to be able to see this given the rare manner in which the timeline panned out. The earthquakes all occurred around the Orca Seamount, a volcano that sits 2,950 feet off of the sea floor, in a narrow passage at the northwestern edge of the continent. This is a region that sees the Phoenix Tectonic Plate and the Antarctic Continental Plate meet, with that of Phoenix resting below that of the Antarctic. This has caused several rifts and openings, as well as stretching some areas of the crust. For those of us who have remembered our geography classes from school, it goes without saying that the areas where tectonic plates meet are those vulnerable to earthquakes. These natural disasters occur when the plates get stuck in one way or another, resulting in high pressure until they successfully separate. In fact, due to the nature of earthquake occurrences, volcanoes erupting is one of the most common reasons behind an earthquake. The first researchers to feel the impact of these earthquakes were scientists who were stationed at the research centers on King George Island, in the Shetlands. Once the word began to spread, Seska's team, alongside much of the scientific world, began to work on this project. There is often a desire to find out more about these events. Unfortunately for us, King George Island is rather out of the way, with only two seismic stations being within close proximity. So these two stations, alongside ground stations for the Global Satellite Navigation System, are what provided the data for this research project. There may not have been masses of research perspectives available. The stations that are close by feature intuitive but most importantly sensitive technology, meaning that even the smallest tremors could be picked up and noticed. This, coupled with the research obtained by more distant but more technologically advanced stations, provided the team with a comprehensive overview of the geological processes that led to these whopping 85,000 earthquakes. With regard to the severity of these earthquakes, the highest clocked in at a magnitude of 5.9, a measurement obtained by two separate earthquakes. Seska explained that they believed the higher magnitude earthquakes resulted in some fractures that in turn reduced the pressure upon the magma. We are still waiting for evidence to confirm some of our predictions and theories, particularly surrounding the eruption of the volcano. Only time will tell precisely what took place in the late summer and autumn of 2020 in Antarctica. Nikola Tesla's invention from 100 years ago makes headlines today. World-renowned inventor Nikola Tesla has made his mark on history and still inspires scientists today. 
His revolutionary inventions have stood the test of time as we continue to enjoy his seemingly miraculous creation of AC electricity. His lesser-known inventions, however, have largely been forgotten. Until now. Tesla created a macrofluidic valve, also known as the Tesla valve or an earthquake machine. To say the least, his invention was misunderstood and overlooked. The practicality of the device was not fully realized at the time. Only 100 years later has his device begun to receive recognition as a brilliant piece of machinery. The Tesla valve is designed to be a conduit for fluids in which the main channel is scattered into various diverting teardrop-shaped loops. The loops direct the fluid to easily flow through in one direction but block it from flowing in the opposite direction. It is similar to a check valve, commonly used in plumbing. However, the main difference is that Tesla's valve does not incorporate moving parts. This allows the device to last longer and minimize wear and tear. A prominent professor at New York University's Courant Institute of Mathematical Sciences, Leif Ristroff, said of the valve, while Tesla is known as a wizard of electric currents and electrical circuits, his lesser-known work to control flows of fluid currents was truly ahead of its time. Ristroff was a pioneer in exploring the old invention for new uses. He began experimenting with a replica of the valve to discover the secrets that awaited. Through his experimentation, he found that the valve would activate its flow-blocking capacity when the valve experiences turbulence and swirling vortices are created within the valve. These swirling vortices would establish a specific flow rate that would prevent the liquid from flowing in a particular direction. Ristrov claimed that, moreover, the turbulence appears at a far lower flow rate than have ever previously been observed for pipes of more standard shapes, up to 20 times lower speed than conventional turbulence in a cylindrical pipe or tube. How can it be used today? The discovery that shocked Ristrov and his team was finding that the valve performs optimally under unsteady conditions, with turbulence delivered in pulses or oscillations. This attribute made the valve a perfect candidate for high-vibration environments. According to Ristrov, this was the turning point of their exploration. He said the following, It could be used to harness the vibrations in engines and machinery to pump fuel, coolant, lubricant, or other gases and liquids. Within a standard vehicle, this exact form of turbulence is created, making the Tesla valve an excellent candidate for managing fuel and other liquids within a car. Ristrov speculates, it's remarkable that this 100-year-old invention is still not completely understood and may be useful in modern technologies in ways not yet considered. Lunar Rover Discovers Mysterious Glass Spheres China's U-22 rover has been the force behind several recent discoveries regarding the dark side of the moon and its latest find is especially intriguing. The mission, which was the first successful landing on the far side of the moon, has been to uncover hidden secrets kept by the far side of the moon by looking in depth at panoramic images captured by the rover, which was deposited in the moon's massive von Karman crater. One of these images, which proved especially interesting to researchers after they noticed two small intact spheres made of what appeared to be translucent glass. The knowledge that glass spheres were discovered on the moon might alone be surprising information to some. The fact is that glass is not altogether uncommon on the lunar surface. The ingredients needed to create glass are rather simple, just silicate and high temperatures, and the moon has had a large amount of both throughout its lifetime. We know that the moon was the site of extensive volcanism in the past, as well as the location of intense heat generated by meteorites and other foreign bodies. Silicate, which is found all over the lunar surface, was subject to this volcanic activity and high temperatures, resulting in the large amount of glass pieces that can be found across the surface. So, if glass is not rare on the moon, why are these spheres of such interest to the researchers studying U-22's images? The answer lies in what the glass can tell us about the history of the moon and the chemical reactions that have occurred. There is a chance that the volcanic activity that led to the other glass remnants also created these spheres. They do appear to be slightly different from other specimens that have been found. Of the previous specimens, any spheres that were discovered were almost microscopic and none measured over a millimeter compared to U-22 spheres 
which measure between 15 and 25 mm in diameter. They also range from transparent to semi-transparent with an interesting vitreous luster. But how did these strange orbs end up on the moon? One theory claims that the spheres are impact spheres, which are created even here on Earth when something hits the surface so forcefully that it generates enough heat to melt the crust. The melted pieces are projected into the air by the impact and cool into tiny glass beads. These beads are usually incredibly small, which likely rules impact out as a direct source of U22's glass spheres. The team studying the images and U22's analysis of their composition believe that they are likely created from a type of volcanic glass called anorthosite, which might have remelted due to the heat of an enormous impact and then cooled into the balls that the rover discovered. The team responsible for the research wrote, as the first discovery of macroscopic and translucent glass globules on the moon, this study predicts that such globules should be abundant across the lunar highland, providing promising sampling targets to reveal the early impact history of the moon. As research continues, hopefully we will begin to be able to peel back the layers of the moon's history and discover more about its formation and life through the millennia. But what do you make of these recent discoveries? Be sure to let us know your thoughts in the comment section below and help us grow this community while working to solve these unexplained mysteries. Thank you for watching and don't forget to subscribe for more videos.